May snap review of Smile. Smile 2. I've literally just come out of Cineworld Leicester Square. I actually feel a bit awkward talking around everyone, but it is what it is. Um, I'll never see him again. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Smile 2 is uh, pretty fucked up. Uh, I don't know if uh, you saw Smile 1. Smile 1 was like pretty fucked up, but it was also quite thin. Um, and I think I didn't really love it that much to be honest. I looked on my letterbox and I gave it a one and a half stars out of five. So anyway, needless to say, this is much, much better, much more fucked up. And the lore of it, like the, the kind of story behind the smile is more rich. Um, whether that's a good or a bad thing, that's up for debate. But I would say that it's certainly a more like, there's more depth to it uh, this time around. Um, I think the negatives of that are uh, two hour, 10 minute film, which ultimately for a film that is predominantly jump scares, I don't really need that from that type of horror film. You know, it's not elevated horror, that wanky term like, hereditaries and talk to me's and that kind of thing. And even then, I don't think they're as long as this. Um, I think a two hour, 10 minute runtime is slightly above its station. Um, but what's in it is really, really positive. First of all, um, the performance from the lead, I heard in advance of seeing it was like Oscar worthy. And I was like, how the fuck is it Oscar worthy? Anyway, it is, it really is Oscar worthy. Um, She's incredible and has to cover so many, so many extremes of trauma and despair and fear. And I know that's pretty standard issue for a horror film, but it's, it's hard, if you haven't seen it, it's hard to describe like how, how far she takes it and how good she is at that. Um, so that's definitely a positive. Another po a positive R is the, the set pieces are brilliant. Like this director um, has, a, has a real good grasp of the set pieces. You know, there's a, there's, there's a bit that's hinted in the trailer of all, all her um, dancers kind of smiling at her and following her in like this choreographed way. It's a brilliant scene, such a good idea. Um, and uh, other set pieces, like I, 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 won't, I won't go into spoilers because uh, there's no real need for it um what i will say is that um i think like the the law as in l-o-r-e of the smile like the the background of the smile that, it, that this film goes into it's um do you know what i just started that sentence and it's absolutely not what i wanted to fucking talk about what i want to talk about is um that sometimes the smile films they'll take you down a cul-de-sac where it's like you think something's real but it's not real because the parameters of what is reality in the world of smile is not defined enough for me it just kind of fucks with it whenever it wants to and then sometimes it's fine and sometimes it's not and there's it's not really defined when it comes and when it goes and i guess it tries to start defining things like that it doesn't get very far in doing so but it's kind of annoying because i don't like you know, the first time, the first few times in the first film where like something happens and then, oh, the, 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 the wool has been pulled over your eyes, the rug gets pulled out from under you um, and other idioms. And you're like, oh, that didn't actually happen. That was just a smile fucking with their head. You're like, oh, that's, that's interesting. That's fucked up. But you know, by the, even in the first film that got a bit weary and we're talking in Smile 2, we're talking, you know, by the third, fourth, fifth time where it's like, it's almost like that thing you get taught at school not to do when you're writing something. It's like, and it was all a dream. It's like you get that over and over again. And it's, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a necessity of like the construct of the concept, but it's frustrating because you're always kind of feeling like you're not getting anywhere. That's what I would say is my biggest frustration. Um, Fucking out so busy in so so busy in central Soho, he says, like that's a fucking surprise. Uh, nah, it's just yeah, that was annoying. Uh, but like I say, the set pieces are brilliant, the jump scares, I mean they made me fucking jump. 
And I have to say, I really feel desensitized to like disgusting stuff in horror films nowadays. Um, I think everything most, you know, the genre has been taken to 11 to stupid and the effects are so fucking good nowadays that I do feel desensitized. Um, but this film made me feel actually a bit physically sick at times. Uh, nothing funny about that. Uh, but I did feel physically sick uh, at times. Maybe that was because I downed a large slushy in the first 10 minutes. It could be. It could be because of that. Or it could be an unfortunate combination of the two. What I would say is that the sickness kept coming back throughout the film at the disgusting parts all the way to the end. So I doubt that that slushy was repeating on me for two hours and 10 minutes. It was fucking disgusting. Some of the deaths and gore in this film is fucking disgusting. Um, now, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. I am going to go into spoilers for anyone who hasn't seen it. Turn off now. Spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Anyone who's seen it, I really loved the ending conceit of like, she's in, she's on tour and and she kills herself on stage. I like that. But it really disappointed me that the kind of final the crescendo of this film was her being met by some like metamorphosis like representation of this demon that was like really CGI and that felt like such a shame because um, I, know there's, I know there's quite a lot of CGI and the gore involved in the film up until that point but it felt like that was such a level of plasticky CGI for that weird demon on stage at the end it was kind of didn't fit the rest of the film which felt like enhanced yeah but quite grounded gore um and and it's taken it it's taken the law there's that word again it's taken the law to uh a place where i don't know if it's going to be able to handle that in a third film because there will be a third film and i don't know how they're gonna iterate on that story um now that that cat's out of the bag you know now that we're like oh it's like this over I don't know this omniscient demon being that actually has a physical form and yeah and, and the whole kind of you can get your heart maybe you can get your heart to stop and get rid of it that's kind of semi been explored so I will see a third film but um, yeah I'm concerned that it's going to be a bit too in the weeds on that shit you know anyway <laughs> Hey bro. It's not funny. Uh, so I enjoyed Smell 2 certainly better than the first film. I give the first film a fucking 3 out of 10. I give this a solid 6 or 7 out of 10. If you like your jumpy gore, you know, you don't really get better than that nowadays. Just definitely go see it. Um, personally for me, I can take or leave jumpy gore, but it's, it's on the high end of that. So yeah, 6 or 7 out of 10 for me. Uh, subscribe if you enjoy my reviews because I've got this new show of mine Fred Flicks where I'm interviewing people check it out about films and that's gonna uh, turn into something really really fun and different soon I've just started filming the next kind of section of that the next series of it and it's uh, it's it's gonna be really funny um, and uh, yeah, and also check me out on Letterboxd. I'm on Letterboxd this, uh, at Fred Asquith. Uh, anyone who's watching this to the end should be a Letterboxer. So yeah, check me out. And uh, see you next time.